everyone! This is the third video in Unit 4 where we are going to be talking about the five main classifications of chemical reactions. Now, we talked a little while ago or in a previous video about what a chemical equation is and it's just that way of representing a chemical reaction with the reactants and products and showcasing the fact that you can't create or destroy atoms here. Now, when we talk about reactions, there's five main categories. In the next couple of videos, we're going to learn to classify those further, but for right now, the, we're going to just to talk about the five main categories, okay? So here, we're going to be focusing right there. So there's five main classifications of chemical reactions, uh, synthesis, decomposition, combustion, single replacement, and double replacement. Now, honestly, there's two ways to say these bottom two. It could be single replacement or single displacement. Sometimes if um, somebody asks for more supplemental homework, the sources that we pull out may have it this way. It doesn't, um, oops, that should be double. It doesn't mean anything. It is just going to be whether you choose to say, hey, I'm replacing you, or hey, I made them move so that I can have that spot. Kind of like in a, f a football game or a soccer game, you have you know, a substitution. That's all these are. Is there's either going to be one thing that's substituted or two. And it's just how you word it. It doesn't matter. So in terms of how we recognize these, synthesis is probably the easiest. Here we have two reactants that are going to combine on the left to form one product on the right of the arrow. So for example, here we have two sodium reacting with one chlorine to produce two NaCl. Now if we look at this, this is um, really and truly a very violent reaction and we have sodium uh, that is sodium metal is so violent it is usually um, stored in underneath a bunch of like mineral oil so that it can't touch the air as soon as it touches the air, it will actually react with moisture in the air and form a really uh, explosive type of reaction. Um, you know, chemistry instructors, including myself, love to use this as a demo because you can take a really tiny chunk and throw it at a beaker of water and get a huge reaction, even for the back of a huge lecture hall. Uh, that's assuming, of course, we have a hood and all safety equipment in the room, but you know. So you have this highly explosive sodium metal. You have chlorine gas which is green in color and well toxic. It smells bad. It kind of smells like pool but it's toxic to breathe in. And it reacts together and you get NaCl, sodium chloride. Well this is just table salt and of all things this is actually not only benign meaning not explosive, not harmful, it's actually tasty. And so you go from explosive and toxic to rather tasty. But the whole point is two reactants on the left, one product on the right. That is synthesis. Decomposition is the exact opposite. Here you have one reactant on the left of the arrow producing two or more uh, products. Now something like potassium chlorate will decompose into potassium chloride and oxygen. Calcium carbonate can decompose into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. One thing on the left, two things on the right. Combustion is probably a little harder to recognize off the bat. Uh, this is anything that reacts with oxygen to produce CO2 and water. So on the right you have oops, sorry guys, you have something and oxygen and then on the right you have carbon dioxide and water. No matter what it is, it doesn't all, you know, always make sense, but it burns in the presence of oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. 
single replacement is pretty interesting. Here you have an element and a compound reacting to make a compound and a different element. And you can kind of visualize this as this element comes in and kicks out the other one. Okay, And so for example if we had copper solid reacting with silver nitrate to produce copper nitrate and silver metal. And um, what you can usually do is, so here's a picture of it after the reaction has started. You start off with a beaker that has got a silver nitrate, which is clear and colorless uh, solution, and you add a copper wire. And what will happen is the copper wire leaves and forms this nice blue solution, and the silver will actually uh, pellet down, precipitate out on the <laughs> on the wire that's there. Okay, so here we've got a single replacement because copper replaces silver like that. And so you have silver comes over here by itself and then copper is now with nitrate. Again notice guys the cation is written first just like we learned in the last unit. Here we've got mag uh, magnesium and water same thing, you can kind of view this as magnesium is going to replace one of these hydrogens. You're going to end up getting hydrogen element by itself and magnesium hydroxide. So element compound going to compound element. Okay. Double replacement, you have two compounds on both sides but they are rearranging partners. If you can, imagine this as high school social life, okay? A is dating B, C is dating D, and they are going to switch partners. And so now on the other side, C is going to be with B and A is going to be with D. So cation is with the new anion, um, C is with this new one. Again, um, just kind of as a reminder, cation anion, cation anion, cation A and C must be written first, okay? So for example, here we've got silver nitrate and sodium chloride. The metals have to be written first. So on the other side, we're going to switch partners. Silver goes with chlorine, sodium goes with nitrate, but the two metals have to be written first. Now, in terms of what else we can do, sometimes the way that this is easier to visualize is the outer ones, so silver and chlorine, and then the two inner ones, sodium and nitrate. Okay, Just remember that the metal or cation has to come first. On the bottom one, here we have HCl and NaOH. So the outer and inner, NaCl and HOH, which is really just going to rearrange to water. Now, this is probably one of the most used reactions in terms of industry. So is a single replacement. Here you have, come on, there we go. One of the first things that this was used for was silver plating, so just making um, mirrors and that kind of thing. So what you do, you can actually order these kits not at home because silver is so toxic, but in general you can order these kits for next to nothing from Flynn and Fisher and other science companies. You have a few reactants that you float around, you have uh, some uh, silver nitrate and usually it's NaOH or NaCl depending on which kit you're using. You can automatically see the color change that indicate chemical reaction is happening um, and as they keep swirling you're also going to start to see that precipitation happen. Here because this precipitant is going to be um, a silver chloride or silver hydroxide, it is going to be shiny in appearance rather than cloudy like the one of the last videos. And so you can already see it's starting to be kind of reflective and that brown color is going to kind of start to fade and it's going to become a much more silver in appearance color and until you can almost see exactly where that metal is forming. 
Now the way that they would make this into a mirror is if they were using it on a flat surface they would let it happen on the flat surface and then they would paint the back with like a polyurethane or paint of some kind. If you have a really old mirror they typically start to look brown like that original color and that's just where the paint has started to wear off and it's becoming oxidized and going back to the original form. So that is it for the types of let's just get rid of those, um, for the my, five main types of chemical reactions.